welcome back to the Lady Shaw Reacts. I got another Z Frank 1 video for you. This is Z Frank 1 True Facts The Hummingbird Warrior. I am trying the new green screen setup. Let me know what y'all think about this. And let's get into this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you go check out Z Frank 1's channel. He is amazing. He's hilarious. I love him to death. So let's go. Birds are tiny little birds. So tiny that moths are sometimes mistaken for humming birds. And the blue jays, you know how they are, they tease. Where's your pupa? And then the hummingbirds like it's pronounced pupa and I'm not a moth. But if you start correcting the pronunciation of a bully, you're a nerd bird. And they're like, hey nerd bird, are you gonna stick your freaky fingernail tongue into some flower's sexy hole? And to be honest, that one is actually fair. They do have a freaky little tongue. We'll get back to that in a second. But you don't just wake up one day. Okay, this, I've gotta go back to the beginning. These birds are beautiful. Just the iridescence and the way the light shines off of them is, is crazy is crazy and i'm glad that i'm trying my new green screen out with this type of content because you guys can see better how beautiful these animals are or these birds what do you say birds beards beards okay let's go back the humming beard Hummingbirds are tiny little birds. So tiny that moths are sometimes mistaken for hummingbirds. And the blue jays, you know how they are, they tease. Where's your pupa? And then the hummingbirds like it's pronounced pupa and I'm not a moth. But if you start correcting the pronunciation of a bully, you're a nerd bird. And they're like, hey nerd bird, are you gonna stick your freaky fingernail tongue into some flower's sexy hole? And to be honest, that one is actually fair. They do have a freaky little tongue. We'll get back to that in a second. But you don't just wake up one day saying you want a deep tongue of flour, just like no one has a to-do list that includes trying to snort cocaine residue out of a shag carpet. It's just the sad outcome of a very serious addiction. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> That's a weird analogy. That's kind of crazy. All right. Cane residue out of a shag carpet. It's just the sad outcome of a very serious addiction. Flowers contain nectar, which contains sugar, and hummingbirds are addicted to it. Sorry, addicted to it. Jerry, I don't need the phonetics. I can read. But this isn't some hiding a bunch of Kit Kats in random drawers around the apartment kind of sugar addiction. You know who you are. These little hummers drink more than twice their body weight in nectar each day, using their tongue. And this is no ordinary run-of-the-mill tongue. The back part is fleshy-fleshy like ours, but it has a bone in it, don't judge. The long front part, however, is made of keratin, like a fingernail. And this fingernail tongue grows in a curious shape. If we zoom in, you can see that a cross-section of the tongue looks like two tadpoles that got into an argument. On closer inspection, it looks like a thumb smear wipe of mucus on a windshield. But magnified further, it resembles a fancy reclaimed wood cheese board you got as a gift, but don't use because cheese gets in those little cracks and holes. It's bullshit. However, if you zoom in all the way, you know what that looks like. That is the pattern on a Mead composition notebook. The very pattern that contains a spot that looks precisely like a cross-section of a hummingbird beak. Anyway, you can see that it forms two not rolled up all the way fruit roll-ups. I know what you're thinking, two straws, right? Wrong. As if nature ever does things the easy way. Even if you close the tubes up, they back into that fleshy bit, so no sucky-sucky. Instead, Dr. Margaret Rubega and her team discovered these are... <laughs> oh, Frank, you kill me. It's so no sucky sucky. Instead, Dr. Margaret Rubega and her team discovered these are flexible mechanical pumps. When the hummingbird sticks out its tongue, it smushes these tubes in its beak parts. A thin layer of water molecules keeps it smushed, even though it wants to return to its tube shape. On contact with the nectar, the whole thing springs open and pulls the nectar into the tubes. 
the loaded tongue is pulled back into the beak where the nectar is squeezed out during the next tongue flattening. And this all happens very quickly, 15 licks every second, and they will take over a thousand of these drinks a day. That's a lot of lick friction, and so this fingernail tongue is continuously growing as the tip wears down. But these little badasses make the most of everything, and even the wear and tear is an engineering marvel. Watch what happens right at the end of the tongue. Whee! <laughs> it's like a party. <laughs> the tip of the hummingbird tongue is the ultimate split end. The two tubes separate and begin to fray, sort of like the leaves on a tropical plant. The resulting structure looks like two tiny feathers that fairies might tickle each other with. When this bifurcated tip <laughs> enters the nectar, the fronds spread out. Sorry. <laughs> like two tiny feathers that fairies might tickle each other with. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and brownies and pixies too. Holy moly. <laughs> Pickle each other with. When this bifurcated tip enters the nectar, the fronds spread out like a centipede trying to give a hug. This little nectar mop <laughs> increases the surface area at the tip of the tongue. and helps to get into those hard-to-reach places inside a flower's naughty bits. As it exits the nectar, the whole structure closes back up, trapping additional sugar sauce that wasn't pulled up into the tubes. When a hummingbird says just the tip, you might be licked dry in an instant. Jerry, that's a moth. So anyway, they're out there flip-flapping all over the place, hitting the juice with their freaky tongue, and they're tweaked out. You've been there, it's like cramming for a test with a two-liter of Dr. Pepper. All jittery and you have to pee every minute. I'm telling you, everything's up to eleven with these tiny puffball junky birds. And when they're hopped up looking for that next flower fix, their little wing parts are going at thirty- I'm sorry, I just got to pause for the beauty of this shot. I mean, the iridescence. That magenta color is just gorgeous. The 40 flaps per second. And their heart, forget about it. Well, not before I say it. It's like a speed course set at an EDM concert. Somewhere between 500 and 1,000 beats per minute. Now forget about it. And they run hot. You can see it on these tie-dye cam. Friggin' science hippies. 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is approximately, look it up on Google yourself, Celsius. Friggin' metric system. Takes all the romance out of measurement. I want my units based on the size of a king's unit. That's what a load is. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Frank, you say the strangest things, but I love it. It's out of measurement. I want my units based on the size of a king's unit. That's what a load is. One king's loaf. <laughs> Anyway, these jacked up hummers are caught in this crazy trade-off. If you want to take a thousand drinks, you have to be quick, in all directions, so you get small. And you can't store what you eat as fat or it'll slow you down. So you end up constantly converting the sugar you eat to energy so that you can get more sugar to eat. And if you stop, you starve. It is a vicious bicycle. Jerry, it's cycle, it's not short for bicycle. So with all that going on, you can't blame them for being a little bit aggro sometimes. And by a little bit, I mean crouching tiger, asshole, hummingbird sort of aggro. They can be vicious little bastard birds. It's like <laughs> MMA, but on a... Little bastard birds. You little bastards. <laughs> sort of aggro. They can be vicious little bastard birds. It's like MMA, but on a trapeze, and with swords. It's a Jet Li movie. Hummingbirds will often aggressively defend a territory. They have remarkable spatial memory, and their territory can be a long path of flowers that they visit each day, referred to as a trap line. But of course, a well-hung feeder is the mother load. Jerry Freud would have a field day with that sentence. You need help. Your background patio is basically a SummerSlam wrestling event, with tiny birds beaking the shirt out of each other. Some species take it a step further, and the males have full-on weaponized beaks, complete with dagger-like serrated toothy things on their tomia, the outside borders of their jaw parts, as well as hooked tips. The fairies don't even try to ride these ones. They're too dangerous. I mean, if they find a dead one, they'll take the beak off and make two saws out of it. Use them to cut down twigs to make toothpicks. 
That's how they're made, and that's how fairies put food on the table. And I'll shit in the cup. <laughs> I love that this hummingbird show <coughs> video has become about fairies making toothpicks. Oh my gosh, I can't. To make toothpicks. That's how they're made, and that's how fairies put food on the table. And I'll shit in the cup if you say otherwise. These shorter weapon beaks are most likely less efficient for feeding, but the trade off allows them to defend the flowers that they like the most, sending the other hummingbirds who don't want to deal with crazy farther afield. Now, you can imagine that after a long day of running on fumes all tweaked out and getting the crap beaked out of you, you'd start feeling ridden hard and put away wet. What is that, Jerry? That sounds dirty. It's about what? Jerry, we don't use that word. Oh, I see. Horse. You're saying a horse. Well, that's yeah. perverted, Jerry. When cold or darkness makes it too costly in energy for the hummingbird to keep up its habit, it goes into something called torpor. The hummingbird version of a sugar crash. It's extreme. It's like a did you try unplugging it and plugging it back in kind of crash. Its body temperature can drop more than 40 degrees, matching the temperature of the air around it. Its heart rate drops from over a thousand beats per minute to under a hundred. This allows the hummingbird to use just a fraction of the energy it expends during the day, which prevents the bird from starving to death. In this state, the bird is offline and cannot respond to outside stimuli. Two tendons in their landing gear lock their little bird feet in place so they can hang on even if the naughty teenage fairies come and tip them over in the middle of the night. When it's time to wake up, it can take them up to 20 minutes to shiver and shake their way up to normal body temperature. And of course, the first thing they do is hit the sauce. As springtime approaches, the hummingbirds start to get horny and they prepare to do a kind of reverse spring break. While college students fly south to sip on drinks with flowers in them and get laid in places like Cabo San Lucas, hummingbirds leave places like Cabo San Lucas and fly north to sip on flowers with drinks in them and get laid in places like Toledo. I'm not busting on Toledo. <laughs> I'll leave that to the hummingbirds. Sorry. But first, they must fatten up for the journey. They will nearly double their weight, so they have the energy reserves for these intense journeys that can even take some of these little chubby puffballs across the Gulf of Mexico. Hummingbirds eat insects in order to round out their diet with vital amino acids and fats. Although it looks a bit like trying to catch a fly with tweezers, their bottom beak part is flexible and both bends downward and widens when they open their mouths, right before it all snaps shut. They are not above stealing food directly from a spider's web, what it watches no less. It's the second crappiest thing they do to the spider. After they migrate, they are ready to bump uglies, so to speak, and it's like the balcony scene in Romeo and Juliet, but the agro-musical theater version. Males put on quite a show, little aerial dances where they puff out their gorgettes, which is like a built-in ascot. But in terms of impressing the females, the males have one more trick up there. Well, you'll find out. With a female perched below, the male climbs high up into the sky above her. When he is satisfied with his ups, he turns around and heads downward in an arc, flapping his little wings to gain speed in a dive that can reach nearly 50 miles per hour. As he approaches the bottom of the arc just above the female, he flashes his gorget and makes a sound. That was an Anna's hummingbird, but each species makes its own sound. The black-chinned hummingbird makes this sound. The rufous hummingbird sounds like this. And then there's the calliope hummingbird, the smallest bird in North America. It does a little barrel roll right at the end. Let's listen. For science, let's slow that down. A little bit more. For science. These sounds are not made with their mouth parts. They're made with their butts, sort of. You may have noticed at the bottom of the arc, the male fans out his tail feathers. Dr. Chris Clark and his team put some of these feathers into a wind tunnel. I mean, if you had your own wind tunnel, you'd put all kinds of crap in. Not a baby, not mayonnaise, but definitely the butt feathers of a bird. They found that these tail feathers are specialized to make sound as air rushes past them. Different feathers in different positions make different sounds. Sometimes feathers will even interact with one another. 
One function of the hummingbird dive is to build up speed so they can use their butt feathers as an instrument. Imagine impressing your date on a picnic by climbing up a large hill, then running down as fast as you can and right when you pass them spreading your cheeks and that is how a hummingbird do. If the female is up for it, then they will rub their... I'm just dead. I'm just dead. <laughs> this is so hilarious. Why did I wait so long to watch this? That is how a hummingbird do. If the female is up for it, then they will rub their cloacas together. Not totally sure how the position works. Lots of feathers in the way. But there's rubbing. Then the male f***s right off and the female is left to do everything else. And she's good at it too. She builds a tiny nest from fluffy things like moss, lichen and dandelion down. To weave it together, she will steal the silk from spiders' webs. I told you. Like a good pair of sweatpants, the nest is designed to stretch as the eggs hatch and the babies grow. During this time, she must protect her nest as well as find food, both for herself and to puke into her waiting baby's beaks. To keep her babies warm at night, she will avoid torpor and keep her little engine running day and night. All of this and then one day they are grown. Ready to venture out. It, what was that? Seriously, Jerry, I'm trying to do the ending and you have a psychedelic bird baby taking a shit right on screen. Well, that's ruined. I mean, the point was going to be don't do drugs. Not a lot of them, anyway. Everything in moderation. Except moderation. You do that all the time. I mean, if you wake up and your tongue is in the shape of a crack pipe, like, that's a good sign. I mean, it's a bad, it's a good sign that it's bad. The hummingbird is a pollinator. As it sticks its beak into the flower's hole, it gets the flower's male stuff all over its face. Jerry, I can't read this. I don't care if that's how the flowers get all pregnant. It's smut. Jerry, that that's a moth. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. It's a common courtesy like wiping your feet before you enter someone's house. Check out the links below. Go show Z Frank one some love. Subscribe to his channel. Till next time, I'm out. <laughs>